Hey everyone, it's Eileen Inigas again. And as I shared with you all, I am a TechBridge Girls alumna. So how did I get into TechBridge Girls? I actually joined TechBridge Girls as a middle school student in Oakland, California. And it's definitely been one of the programs that has changed my life. In TechBridge Girls, I learned key STEM fundamentals that I was able to later use while in college and in my current job today. I can clearly remember some of the projects that I built in TechBridge Girls. Those included robotics, circuitry, and I learned the skills of soldering. Little did I know when I took my first upper division electrical engineering course at UC Berkeley that I actually had to use that skill of soldering. Also, those skills ended up being transferable. So in my job today, I still use the communication, the engineering process, the scientific process. And I have, th I have TechBridge girls to thank for that. If I have one piece of advice for you all, it is to go ahead and explore different areas of STEM. At first, I thought I wanted to be an engineer, but later throughout college, I discovered that I love data and I love math, which is what helped me align and find a career in data science. Having a career in STEM can be challenging, but it is so worth it. And you all are the future. This activity was created by the team at TechBridge Girls, a national nonprofit that delivers high quality STEM programming to girls from low income communities. You can learn more about their work in the video notes below. We've also created a worksheet that you can download to follow along with this video. The worksheet is available in the video notes below and on the TechBridge Girls website at www.techbridgegirls.org. For today's activity, we are going to be building a kite using engineering principles. The first step is to gather our materials. Those include paper. Here I have just regular old tissue paper that I got in a gift, but you can use wax paper or parchment paper, whatever you have lying around the house. We will also be needing string. I have some sort of twine here, or you can use yarn. We will be needing ribbon. You go. You also will be needing two um, type of sticks that you have. Here I have two wooden ones, but maybe you can use straws or, sco uh, or skewers. We also need something that will hold the kite together. So maybe some tape or glue. And lastly, we need scissors. These are gonna be needed to actually cut out your kite from your paper. Now let's move into the design phase. Think about a kite, right? When it's flying in the air, what is it that keeps it staying stable? It actually has to do with forces. And there are four types of forces that will keep your, fl your kite flying up in the air. We have gravity, lift, drag, and tension. Forces are important because they help hold, push, and pull objects. Even our planets are being held together by forces. So now that we know that forces are needed in order to keep our kite in the air, Consider that when you're thinking about where you're going to fly your kite. If you're flying your kite outside, you have to consider the factors of wind or maybe the trees. Those may affect the force and the ability to keep your kite up in the air. All right, let's actually start working with our materials now and designing our kite. There are a couple parts needed for your kite. We need a body, the structure, a tail, and a string. These components are, necess are necessary to build your kite and keep it stable. The reason why we're using tissue paper and not something heavy like cardstock is because the lighter the tissue paper, the more ability it has to stay with the wind dragging it in the air. The frame, which consists of our sticks here or our skewers, is what holds that structure together and makes sure that it's sturdy from the inside. Another part of your kite is a tail, and that's what we're gonna be using this ribbon here for. That helps keep your kite stable when it's flying. And lastly, we need the string. Why is the string important? Well, it helps connect your actual kite with the person. That's how we're able to control it. So now that you have all the necessary components to build your kite, let's go ahead and design it. Let's take your paper first, and I'm gonna use my skewers to outline it. And just a marker here to design this. Then we're going to take our scissors 
right? These are what our scissors are for. And I'm just gonna leave a little bit extra room because I can always go back and make it smaller if needed. Remember that kites have this common diamond shape, but feel free to experiment. Maybe you wanna try a square. Maybe you wanna add more than two skewers and have some sort of triangle. This is your opportunity to engineer your kite. Okay, we could put the scraps away. So this is my kite outline. Looks pretty good, huh? Now, the skewers, what are we gonna do with those? I'm gonna place them in a typical diamond position. This is when our tape comes in. Other things to consider are the weight as well. The more tape we're adding, the heavier our kite can be. And since we want our kite to be light as possible, you may want to engineer a couple of ways to get your kite as light as possible. This is my kite here. Looks pretty good. All right. We also need to connect the tail here. Here's my tail. You can experiment using one long tail or maybe a couple of these shorter ones here. Our last one is our string. This is how I'm gonna control the kite. Looks pretty good. You can also decorate your kite if you want. All right, let's give it a try. Hmm. Looks like my kite didn't really stay up. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna redesign it and add additional tape. Okay, take two of my kite. Now I have secured it with additional tape here and let's see if it works better now. Oh, it's not bad. Huh. Looks like my kite was able to stay up a tiny bit. Let's try it again. It'd be interesting to know how it performs outside in the wind. Now, take some time and ask yourself what is challenging about this activity and why. Do you think your kite will work better if it was indoor or outdoors? Obviously, I think I'm a bit limited with space here, so probably trying it outdoors would have been better. Also think about the materials that you're using. I've re-engineered it again by adding tape on each side but perhaps maybe glue would have worked better in my situation. Think about what would work best for your kite. 
Congratulations, you've built your own kite. You've now joined the thousands of other girls in the TechBridge Girls community who are exploring STEM and leading fearlessly at home. To celebrate, we would love for you to post a photo of your project on social media and tag the handle at TechBridgeGirls on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure that you have permission from your guardians and parents and that the photo is only of you and your project and does not include your face or other spaces in the image. For more TechBridge Girls at home activities, visit www.techbridgegirls.org.